The city of Southampton has always had a special relationship with cruise ships and now in a temporary exhibition at the Sea City Museum is taking a look back to the golden age of sea travel. Our reporter Richard Enston has more. From the 1920s to the 1950s, ocean liners were the lifeblood of Southampton. They brought employment, industry and glamour. Now the Sea City Museum is telling the story of how the enormous vessels shaped the history of the city. Ocean liners are so important to Southampton and Southampton is so important to the ocean liners and we have a really large collection of material in our museum stores that is not often on display, you know, and, and particularly some of the larger things, you know, the furniture and things like that. We, we don't often have room because it takes a big exhibition space to put it on. Uh, so, so it was a sort of a combination of there is a story that, that we really want to tell, but also we have a lot of things that we'd like uh, the public to be able to enjoy. All items on display are from the city's extensive archive. Everything from posters and paintings to cutlery and furniture. And every object has a story to tell. Obviously Lusitania is famous for being sunk during the First World War, lots of, lots of lives, but uh, this fan is from when it was just a liner. Before we had it, it was obviously just stored in a drawer, as you would with a souvenir if you were given it. Uh, and and it, was, it had sort of turned into just sticks. Uh, but because we were able to put on this exhibition, we were able to include it. We had the opportunity to have a paper conservator actually fan out. It's, it's a crepe uh, and, and, and card fan. So, so it's been brought back to life again. So I, I'm, I'm particularly fond of that. For one visitor, the exhibition helped rekindle memories of his time working at sea. The Sea School of Sharpness, Linda Catrix in 1952. Come out of there after eight weeks of training, joined the Queen Elizabeth I <laughs> as a 16 year old boy and uh, went to sea his first trip to New York in 1953 as a 16 year old and uh, walking around my head in the air, looking at all the skyscrapers and everything else. I, I love the sea, I did 10 years at sea on all Cunard ships. Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mary, Scythia, Samaria, Franconia, Saxonia, and uh, back to the Queen Elizabeth again. Looked around nearly every picture I can see, and uh, it's a wonderful exhibition of all the ships and parts and everything that comes with going to sea and being at sea. Southampton's relationship with ocean liners has played a huge part in many people's lives, none more so than that of Stephen Payne, OBE. Well, I was five years old when I watched Blue Peter, Valerie Singleton, visit the old Queen Elizabeth. And that started me on the path of thinking, well, when I grow up, I want to design a big ocean liner. And then when I was nine, came to here to Southampton for the very first time, visited the QE2, which was a, a tremendous thing for me as a, a nine-year-old. And then came back here to Southampton to study naval architecture and ended up being given the job one billion dollars to design Queen Mary 2. With the port and the ships having been pivotal in his own life, Stephen believes the city should take huge pride in them. Well, it brings so much employment, so much trade and business. Without the ships and that, I, I think Southampton would be a much lesser place and uh, the two really need each other. The ships need Southampton, and Southampton leads the ships. Richard Enston for that Solent.